January 10th, 2023, we had this Airbus has a fire to uh, one of the power banks. People were charging their phones and uh, it heated up, got fire. So I would definitely try to move these people away if possible. Um, but people tried to grab it with their hands. They burned their fingers. So they're just going to leave it there where it's at. Uh, we're going to go over different ways you can attack this thing. But they grabbed the fire extinguisher, which is good. It was a Halon fire extinguisher, which is uh, better for electronic devices. It's cleaner and it's better for those around um, than the dry chemical, which really you don't want in your respiratory. Any of this stuff you don't want to breathe in, but the Halon is the safest of, of the group. Um, you can see they were trying to roll out from Singapore. They're still on the ground and they got that threat taken care of quickly. It was this Scoot Airlines. Uh, Airbus A320 9 Victor Tango November Echo was the tail number and luckily they were still on the ground so they could return and then here was Lufthansa uh, aircraft you can see it was a laptop overhead and she blew that dry chemical right in her face this is December 26 2022 and she could have just opened it a little bit maybe get a little bit higher so she can look a little bit closer to see where it was and then the nozzle for those fire extinguishers are very small, so she just has to open it enough to get that nozzle in, and then she can close it and let the extinguisher do its job. So this was the aircraft here, a Boeing 747, Delta, Alpha, Bravo, India, Delta, Juliet was the tail number. It was LA to Frankfurt, and they had the emergency uh, land in Chicago. So this is a laptop here. You can see it's called thermal runaway when these power uh the batteries start heating up the cells next to each other and it expands and then you could have these type of fires so here it is on an aircraft so you can uh, actually see especially if there's you know seat cushions um and uh, combustible things around the laptop maybe somebody has their jacket you know it can really start spreading and catching fire to things around it here's the batteries on that thermal runaway so one battery gets the next battery which heats up the next battery and eventually you have a, a big fire. Um, if these things are hidden, it can definitely uh, cause some problems. So how critical are small in-flight fires? In-flight fires, in fires left unattended, particularly those that are not readily accessible, may lead to catastrophic failure that result in the complete loss of airplanes. Fire tests conducted by various regulatory authorities have shown that fires allowed to spread into an aircraft's overhead area may be uncontrollable in as few as 8 to 10 minutes. That's very quick. Studies have shown that flight crew may, be, may have as few as 15 to 20 minutes to get an aircraft on the ground if the crew allows a hidden fire to progress without any intervention. So I live in Hawaii. We have five and a half hour flights from Hawaii to the mainland and there is no place to put the aircraft down. You're over the ocean. So this is very important for us who live in Hawaii. Uh, delaying the aircraft's descent by only a couple of minutes might make the difference between a successful landing and evacuation and complete loss of the aircraft and its occupants so these small fires they can turn to complete losses if left unattended here's uh, FAA test footage of portable electronic devices catching fire um, and you can see how how quickly these things can turn and uh, and cause major issues even though these devices are are quite small um, again these fires can spread to surrounding areas there's that tablet completely on fire so what can passengers do well you want to be immediate aggressive and act and take action so when you see your thing start heating up try to cool it down um, the onboard fire extinguisher should be used you can go ahead and put water on it if you have water near you or soda or anything that could really stop that th that thermal runaway and and slow down that heating um, what are recommended procedures use halon extinguishers um, after the fire, douse it with water and do not attempt to pick up or move the smoke or burning device. You may be injured and don't cover it with ice either because ice is just, it's not getting inside and it's not soaking up that, that thermal runaway, those battery cells. Um, so yeah, there's a lot you can do as a passenger, you know, use, use what you have around you um, to stop this thing from, from getting out of hand. So again, here you can see the fire. 
you don't want to touch it. They did a good job. I think I think training needs to be um, happen more frequently for flight attendants and and the general public as well. Fire extinguisher training. You know, we do that. We we teach um, our our people at our airport. Different workers and companies come and and we teach them how to use it. You want to pull the pin, squeeze and sweep, and um, definitely. They did a good job though here. You can see they they seem calm as they're uh, attempting to put this fire out. But yeah, you definitely don't want to breathe that stuff in. And then here's when things go wrong. So this is an example um, of a flight that the aircraft was lost. It was June 2nd, 1983. DC-9, um, basically, during descent, the smoke increased moving forward into the cabin, and um, of the 41 passengers, 23 were unable to evacuate and died in the fire, and the plane was destroyed, and that's just from a fire that was not taken care of um, on the aircraft. So, you know, these things, it, history has shown. I got this from the FAA Advisory Circular 120-80A. If you guys want to read further into these type of electronic fires. But definitely speed is the key for these ones. If this ever happens on your flight, use water, get that fire extinguisher, and uh, try not to breathe that nasty stuff in. But hope you enjoyed this. This is Arfan. I'm Kiona. See you guys next time.